Hello, David here, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you how I turn my Raspberry Pi Zero into an internet radio. Let's get started. This video will be slightly different as I'm not talking about home assistant or home automation. This is one of those side projects that I'm working on and I'd like to share with you guys. This internet radio will be able to play any type of file that VLC can play because I'll be using VLC to do the streaming. This could be an mp3 file stored on the web or it could be an internet radio stream. This is the Raspberry Pi Zero W which means it's got built in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. I will be using it together with this bonnet from Adafruit which can power up to two 3 watt speakers. This is a dual channel potentiometer to control volume and the two 4 ohm 3 watt speakers. Before we get too far with the hardware, it's important to get the software installed. I'm going to be downloading something called the Raspbian Stretch and install it onto the SD card. Once it's downloaded, extract this zip file and you should be left with an image file. Then use Atcher and flash this image file onto the SD card. I'm only using a 4GB SD card and so far, other than slow speeds, I haven't seen anything that's preventing me from using it. Once Etcher finishes flashing and validating, go to your computer and properly eject the SD card. I did not have a 40 pin header so I used the little pieces that I had, plugged them all in and then soldered them all to the Raspberry Pi. I started out by soldering two pins in opposite corners to make sure that everything would be held on. Even though I soldered on the speaker terminals, I actually ended up not using them. I knew this box of all kinds of wires would come in handy at some point. So this is just the normal fan cable. I'm going to cut it in half and clip off the ends. Every time I work with wires like this, I always tin them. I then soldered on the ends of the cables to the speakers. I then connected the speakers to the bonnet. As I was looking through my bin of cables, I found this little connector that fit perfectly into the bonnet, so I'm going to use this versus the terminals. Looking at the bonnet, it looks like the two middle cables are the ground cables, which in my case are the green and the white. The black is the right channel and the red is the left channel. Connecting the potentiometer can be confusing, so I'm going to include a schematic of my setup. Please excuse the sloppy soldering. I couldn't think of a better way to connect it than this. The last thing I did was to solder a wire to pin 23 and to 3.3 volts. I then soldered these to the end of the switch on the potentiometer. Looking at the Pi, here's the mini HDMI port, the micro USB port, the micro USB power port. I'm using a 2.5 amp supply, and here's the mini HDMI to HDMI cable. The USB hub that I want to use uses a mini USB port. However, the Raspberry Pi has got a micro USB port. So I made my own mini USB to micro USB cable. And then it would look like this connected. However, I made a very silly mistake. As you can see, these cables are not insulated. So when I powered up the Raspberry Pi for testing, the red and the white wires touched and the board was fried. Unfortunately, this is the only bend that this board can go into. Say hello to the new Raspberry Pi. 
This time I actually purchased the proper 40 pin header. This actually caused me about 5 day delay because I purchased this from Adafruit. Not to worry, I did learn my lesson. I insulated that cable right away. Now it's time for the initial boot, so I'm going to connect all my peripherals and all my cables to the Raspberry Pi. I'm also going to plug in the SD card at this point. I'm at my desk now and I've got the Raspberry Pi connected to the USB hub, I have the HDMI connected to it, and the last thing I'm going to connect is the power. Upon connecting the power cable, the Raspberry Pi will automatically boot up if the SD card is inserted. So initially I installed Raspbian on a 4GB SD card. This SD card was very slow, not due to its size, but due to its speed. So I ended up upgrading to a 32GB card that was much faster. Once Raspbian has booted up all the way, I'm going to follow this screen. So next the Raspberry Pi looks for Wi-Fi networks, and just by looking at it, it looks like it does not support 5 GHz, but 2.4 GHz should be more than enough for this project. I'm not going to go through with the update, but if you'd like to, you can do so. And now reboot. So now my Raspberry Pi is rebooted and I have Wi-Fi access. By default, the speakers will not be outputting any sound right now. I'm going to run this little command and it's going to enable the speaker bonnet to output sound. So we get a warning saying that the onboard audio chip will be disabled if you proceed. Yes, we would like to continue. Yes, we would like to perform a full install. All done, and now we're going to reboot. So now to test the sound, I'm going to install VLC. Finally done. So the entire install process of installing Pimeroni and installing VLC takes about 20 minutes. If you want to speed this process up and you have one of these bad guys, plug your SD card into here and boot up from here and do the entire process on this. Then once everything is installed, shut it down and move your SD card to the Raspberry Pi Zero. If you were to use the command VLC, this would launch the VLC interface. However, we don't want to launch this whenever we play music. We want it to run in the command line with nothing popping up. So the command we're going to use is called CVLC. So using the command CVLC and following that, the URL of the MP3 song we're going to play, click and enter will start playing the music. Before we get to the actual Python streaming code, the first thing we have to do is install python-vlc. This is the VLC component in Python. This is what's going to allow the Python code to actually stream the music file. And the simple command for that is pip install python-vlc, and this is a pretty quick install. Set up a variable called previous input equal to zero. Set up our pin mode, uh, which is pin 23. And then we're going to create a player called p and p is equal to vlc.mediaplayer and in quotes is our mp3 file that we're going to stream. It could either be an mp3 file or it could be the URL of the internet radio stream that you're listening to. We're going to set up a while true loop which is going to look at pin 23. If pin 23 turns on it's going to play the player which is going to stream our music file. When pin 23 turns off it's going to stop the player which is effectively going to stop our stream. Once I made sure that this Python script was working, I ran a command called sudo cron tap e and then I added this line to it. Double check which version of Python you installed, in my case it's just Python so I can get rid of the three. The nice thing with this script 
is that now I can boot up the Raspberry Pi without a monitor, without a mouse and keyboard, with only power, and it will automatically start running this Python script. What this means is that as soon as I turn the potentiometer on, the music should automatically start streaming. Time for the moment of truth. When I turn this, the music should start streaming. I may have used the wrong potentiometer for this build because the volume control only worked near the end. In the beginning, it wouldn't do anything. If you think you'd be able to help me out, please let me know in the comments down below. So there you have it, a cheap, easy, and affordable way to stream internet radio through a Raspberry Pi. In part two of this video, I'll be creating a housing to put this in and make it more presentable. Thank you very much for all the feedback in my last few videos. I really enjoyed reading through all your comments and hearing what you guys had to say. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed creating it. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.